please tell me you're not gonna give up your job. I haven't decided anything yet. Splash the cash! never been more embarrassed in my whole life. That was a former head of the Board of Governors. Hey, what is this Splash the Cash, sir? It's a radio competition I've been entering. If you answer within the first three rings and give them the catchphrase, you can win £250,000. Do, do you have to pay to enter the competition? So, yeah, just the cost of the text. Oh, that's literally gambling. Right, well, we've worked in spite of everything that is going on. Now is not the time for you to be flushing your career down the drain. That's rich coming from the woman who managed to keep a job as a dinner lady for all of six hours yesterday. Hunter, the pupils of Hollyoaks High are really lucky to have such a kind and caring teacher as you, and you would be doing them and yourself an immense disservice if you resign. Well, it's just going to be too complicated now. My mum's told the whole world that Freya tried to kiss me. Oh, you have got to be kidding. Sorry, I would have got here sooner, but after that turkey smirky incident at the school yesterday, we're not part of the night with Lucas. Sounds awful. Oh, you look happy. Ethan and I had a massive fight. About what? Rafe offered me £50,000 to walk away. That is a serious amount of doubt. If he's got it, could you took it? No, he's got it because I didn't take it. And then he accused me of developing real feelings for Rafe. And are you? No, of course I'm not, but I did lash out and, in turn, accuse him of liking Dilly more than he's laying on. And he admitted it? No. No? I'll get it, yeah. You need to rein it in, you drama queen. <coughs> Sit down. This scam that the two of you came up with to fleece the Lord of the Man, it was bound to get sticky at times, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes. So you and Ethan just need to keep you cool and you'll be Lady Hardcore before you know it. There we go. <laughs> Oh, you're so right, Steve. It's just a blip. And as soon as I get that ring on my finger, the future is only about Ethan, me, and the kids. <laughs> Thanks, Steve, the best. What I told you about Rafe yesterday, you... Hey, what's all this? I've got some money in the pot somehow. Oh, I tell you what, this is gorge. How much do you want for it? 20 quid. 20 quid? Well, I tell you what, if you throw in this silver fringe pendant necklace, you, lady, got yourself a deal. Just when I thought today couldn't get any worse, this happens. Oh, what's happened now, Sal? It's that radio competition I've been entering. I didn't realise that, as well as the money for the text, when they message you back to confirm your entry, they charge you five pounds. And how many times did you enter? About five or six times. What, a week? A day. I know, I know. John Paul was right, it's gambling, and I've just had the phone bill, and I don't know how I'm going to pay for it. Oh, don't worry, Sal. I'll have a word with Carter and see if he can give me my dinner lady job back. What? You were a dinner lady? Uh, I make a mean cheese puff and salad cream balm, I'll have you now. You had your chance to make amends with Carter yesterday. That ship has sailed. No, we, we, we are truly up the creek without a paddle. Hunter, you got a sec? If it's to talk about whether or not I sack my job off, then no. I mean, how am I meant to stay on now? Look at more staring and whispering about me. This Freya thing is going to follow me around forever. Look, what? Come over here, come on. I've been in a very similar position to you. A few years ago, when I was a teacher, I met a guy in a bar and we had a snog. How is Freya trying to kiss me in a classroom the same as you trying to get it on with a random in a bar? He was in sixth form. But the point is, I thought my career was over. Okay, but the dust eventually settled. Look, you've learnt your lesson. OK, so just move on, put it behind you. You all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine, yeah. I'm just feeling a little bit on edge, you know? You cannot let what those idiots did to you ruin your life. I know. John Paul, 
Hi, I'm glad I bumped into you. Um, I've been meaning to ask you something. If it's about Goldie interrupting your press conference, then I'm... Ah. Now, as unfortunate as that event was, your cousin is a grown woman. Huh. You're not responsible for her poor life choices. No, I was doing some research on the school before the press conference. And you read up about me, I take it? Yes, but more so about Finn O'Connor and what he did to you. Sorry, maybe I shouldn't have mentioned anything. It's fine, I just wasn't expecting you to say that. You've certainly had your fair share of trauma in your time. No more than anyone else. Rape, an attack, your son being in another country. When you say it like that, I, I, I guess I probably have, yeah. If you would meet me later, I think I could help you. What do you say? Um, yeah. Sounds great. Excellent. You won't regret it. In case you'd forgotten, Ethan... <laughs> what did I say about tucking your shirt in? That's absolutely right. I wish I had a whole class like you. Your time you're wasting, you know. Not mine. No, <laughs> not quite, but it's a very good attempt. I am so proud of you all. No running. Uh, Mrs Sinclair. Um, reception's let me in. I wonder if now would be an appropriate time for a brief chat. Of course. Yeah, you see, uh, after Goldie's brief tenure, I'm, I'm aware that uh, there's currently a position for a dinner lady now available. So, I'd like to put my name in the hat. Yes, but how would it look? The person who used to be in charge of the school now working in the canteen. Sorry, it's a no. Yeah, I, I understand. Um, oh, by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry about that whole turkey smirky situation yesterday. <laughs> yes, I could have done without that on top of everything else. I'm sure. Trying to feed 300 students five days a week with the budget I've been given isn't exactly easy. Would you like me to take a look at the books for you? I do Norma Crows for her and she's never complained. In that case, I might have a proposition for you. In order to move forward, we need to face our demons head on. Just, I, I haven't been back here since I was attacked, and I tried to come back a few weeks ago, and I just couldn't handle it. But you can now. I know you can. Got this. Is you coming or going? Oh, we're just coming in, aren't we? Yeah. Can't believe it. You were out about him in Dilly all along. I knew he had feelings for her. And now he's using this moment with Rafe as an excuse to go and be with her. Why do things always blow up in my face? It happens to the best of us. Could me have had my fair share of heartache. Then I met my James. I know. It's just, after Brody passed away, I thought, that's it. No one's ever gonna compare to him. But then Ethan came into my life, and I was like, oh, there's a chance for some happiness. What are you looking for? This album that Ethan got for me, Love, The Bangers. He said that every song on here could have been written about his feelings for me. OK. Well, it's nice to see you not wallowing in what's happened. I bet you gave the same spiel to Dilly. I might as well just pass this on to her. I don't even understand how he can be interested in her. She is nothing but a spoiled, entitled princess. Ethan's definitely got a type then, hasn't he? Not in the mood for levity, Steve. I'm sorry. So come on, tell me. 
What's the plan? Plan? You're seeing a Blake. There's always a plan. Not when I've been pied by two different guys on two consecutive days, there isn't. It's Rafe. He wants to come over. You okay? Bit better. Well, the first step is always the hardest. Take it from someone who knows. After that, it's a walk in the park. It's one of these school governors. Excuse me. when the woman I love broke my heart. Oh, mate, you always were so big around women. If you ask me, you've had a lucky escape. She's not exactly what you call low maintenance, is she? No, she isn't. She's reckless and wild and tempestuous. Tempestuous. Shut up, babe. That's why I loved her. Kidding me? No. So wait, you go to the bingo every Wednesday with your nan. What's wrong with that? Nothing wrong with it. It's like we lead parallel lives. I'm John Paul, by the way. BJ. Sorry? When I was born, for reasons known only to themselves, my parents thought it was a good idea to name me Billy Joel. <laughs> well, it's. Very nice to meet you, BJ. So, how do I look? Great. Really great. Yeah. You're not exactly runway ready, but considering what you're going through right now, not too shabby. OK. <laughs> hey, what do you think Rafe wants? I don't know. I guess I'm about to find out. OK, well, should I go and pick the kids up from school, leave you to it? Yes, that would be amazing. Thank you. Good luck. So you're close to your nan, then? Thick as thieves. She was the first person I came out to. She was amazing. She was like, I'm glad you've told me. Now nip to the cheapy for us, I'm starving. <laughs> She sounds amazing. Oh, she is. Mm. Can I ask a question? Mm hmm. You sure think? What? Well, no. No, no, no. We're just, we're just mates. Good to know. I'm gonna nip to the loo. You sure we don't want anything? I do, actually. For you to leave John Paul alone. Seems get lonely, but my hair gets pretty crowded. <laughs> FYI, I don't use you. Uh, what are you doing here at this time? Attention. Why aren't I surprised? More to the point, what are you doing here? Well, Miss Barnes, you are looking at Hollyoaks High's new bookkeeper. It's good to have you back, Miss. Yeah. It's good to be back. Uh -huh. 